Here we're gonna look at a nice result involving the square root of a complex number. So a few years ago, it was pretty popular to make videos of taking the square root of i and finding the value of that. Well, in this case, we're gonna look at the square root of one plus two i, and I think this result is even better. We're gonna use three main computational tools in order to find this value. So the first one is going to be Euler's formula. So that says e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. A proof of that follows from the Taylor series of e to the i theta and cosine theta and sine theta. And that's a pretty quick calculation. And then the other two formulas we need are these half angle formulas for cosine and sine. So we've got cosine of theta over two is plus or minus the square root of one plus cosine theta over two, where you take the plus or the minus depending on which quadrant you are in, in the complex, or sorry, in the plane. And then similarly, sine of theta over two is equal to plus or minus one minus cosine theta over two, and that's under a square root as well. And again, the plus or minus depends on which quadrant you're in. So for our example, we'll only need those positive square roots. So that's kind of nice. And then maybe a geometric tool that we're gonna need here is the polar representation of a number a plus bi. And so if we put the number a plus bi into the complex plane in a rectangular way, we have that it is a units along the real axis, and we generally put the real axis as the horizontal axis, and then it's b units along the imaginary axis. So that means this point up here will be bi. And so that means this guy where the two uh, lines intersect, in other words, this vertical line defined by A and this horizontal line defined by BI will be the point that we're interested in, A plus BI. But we can also represent this in a polar way. And that polar way is by looking at the distance from the origin to our point A plus BI and then the angle that this ray makes with the positive real axis. And doing that, we're able to write a plus bi as r times e to the i theta. Keeping in mind that e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. So this is exactly the polar representation, but instead of putting them as coordinates, like r cosine theta comma r sine theta, we're wrapping it all together into this complex number. And then we've got the following relationship between r, theta, a, and b. So r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. Cos theta is a over r and sine theta is b over r. That's just adjacent over hypotenuse and opposite over hypotenuse. So let's do a couple of quick examples to make sure that we understand this polar representation of a complex number before we do our main goal. So maybe we'll think about the number i first. So I'll draw a little complex plane over here. And what I want to notice is that we can put i up here and its distance away from the origin is one. And then the angle that it defines from the positive x-axis or the positive horizontal axis is 90 degrees or pi over two. So that tells us that i has the polar representation of one times e to the i pi over two. Now let's go ahead and make sure that makes sense with Euler's formula here. So is this equal to cosine pi over two plus i sine pi over two? Well, it is because it's well known that cosine pi over two is zero and sine pi over two is one. So we've achieved this value of i. So that's good. Let's do maybe a couple more examples. So let's do one plus i. So if we draw that on the complex plane, so that's gonna be out here at a 45 degree angle or an angle of pi over four and we know that it's a 45 degree angle because the distance along the horizontal axis and the vertical axis are the same and they are both equal to one. So we've gone one in each direction, but now we can use this formula right here to find the magnitude or the distance away from the origin and that's gonna be the square root of two because it's the square root of one plus one. 
So that tells us we can take this one plus i and write it as the square root of two times e to the i pi over four. And then we can check that that works with Euler's formula as well, but here we'll get the square root of two times cos pi over four plus i sine pi over four. But again, it's well known that cosine of pi over four and sine of pi over four are both one over the square root of two. So that'll cancel that square root of two out front. So that works. Now let's do one more example. And this is sometimes a lot of people's favorite equation in math. Let's look at the number minus one, but think about it in the complex plane. So let's draw a little complex plane here. And the number minus one is going to be back here along the negative real axis. But its distance away from the origin is one. You know, the absolute value of minus one is one. And the angle that it defines is 180 degrees or pi radians. So what that tells us is we can write minus one as e to the i pi using Euler's formula. Maybe I won't do the calculation. I'll leave it to you guys to check that Euler's formula checks this calculation out and this is true. And I should point out that this is the formula that a lot of people think is maybe one of the most beautiful formulas in math. Or sometimes it's presented as e to the i pi plus one equals zero. Okay, let's maybe go ahead and clean this up and then we will dive into our goal calculation. So now that we've done some background on the polar representation of a complex number, let's do our goal. In other words, we wanna take the square root of one plus two i. But before we do that, let's just look at one plus two i itself. So I'm gonna draw that on the complex plane, see if we can get a feel for its magnitude, its distance away from the origin, and what the angle might be. So notice it's gonna live right about here. So we could put maybe one in this direction, and then two up in this direction, so this would be two i. So all in all, in the complex plane, it's right about here, one plus two i. So I'm gonna maybe draw a line segment from the origin, and we can do a quick calculation to see that its distance from the origin is the square root of five. So it's the square root of one plus two squared, so that's gonna be the square root of five. But then its angle, I'm just gonna call it alpha, and it's actually tricky to find the exact value of this angle and also not necessary. So maybe let's notice real quick in our setup that we have r equals the square root of five like we had just talked about. We don't know alpha, but we do know cosine of alpha and sine of alpha. So let's notice that cosine of alpha is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's gonna be one by root five. And then sine of alpha is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, so that's gonna be two over root five. So again, I wanna reiterate that at the moment, we don't know the value of alpha, but we know the value of cosine of alpha and sine of alpha. Okay, so now that we've done this prep work, let's go ahead and calculate our goal square root. So we can take the square root of one plus two i and rewrite that as the square root of, well, let's write one plus two i using our polar representation of complex numbers. And by our discussion in this little block right here, we know that, know that that is equal to the square root of five e to the i alpha. Great. So that means we can put a root five e to the i alpha in here. Now I'm gonna use some rules involving the square root and exponents to break this up into the fourth root of five times e to the i alpha over two. So I had the square root of a product. I'm gonna make that the product of square roots. And then the square root of the square root of something is the fourth root of something. Now the next thing that I wanna do is use Euler's formula to break this e to the i alpha over two into cosine and sine. So now I've got the fourth root of five. And then next I have cosine of alpha over two plus i times sine of alpha over two. And you might think we're in trouble because we don't know alpha exactly. So how can we calculate cosine of alpha over two and sine of alpha over two? 
Well, we don't need to know alpha exactly. We only need to know its value at cosine and sine and the fact that it's in this first quadrant along with these half angle formulas. So using these half angle formulas, we see that we have the fourth root of five and then we can replace cosine of alpha over two using this. So that's gonna be one plus one over root five, that's the cosine of alpha over two, where I took the positive square root because I'm in this first quadrant. And then next I have I sine of alpha over two, but I can replace that with one minus one over the square root of five over two. Again, I took the positive square root because we're in that first quadrant. Great. Now the next thing that I wanna do is distribute the square root of five through, and then when we bring it inside of this square root on each one, it will become a square root of five instead of a fourth root of five. So let's see what that'll give us. So now we'll have the square root of, so we'll have the square root of five plus one over two. So let's talk our way through that. So this fourth root entered the square root, but we had to square it in order for it to enter the square root. So the fourth root became a square root. So it multiplied one to give us the square root of five, it multiplied one over root five to give us one. So we've got that. And then we'll have plus i times the square root of, well, a very similar thing happens here. We've got root five minus one over two. And you might think, well, well now it seems like we're done and this doesn't look pretty, but if you notice that this guy right here is the golden ratio, and this guy right here is the reciprocal of the golden ratio, that's gonna allow us to rewrite this as the square root of phi plus i times the square root of one over phi, where again, phi is equal to the golden ratio. And that takes this fairly standard looking problem of finding the square root of a complex number and makes it a lot nicer given that it involves this golden ratio. And that's a good place to stop.